Today I'm joined by Eva McArdle, director of Kissing Candice. Or Candice, or how do you say it? Uh, either, you either way, I mean, can, way. I say Candice, but you know, you can say Some people say way. Candice, because yeah. I think like Candice Bergen, I know that has nothing to do with the movie at all, but just that's how it's kind of like. Um, the first thing I wanted to ask you about was, um, I suppose there is an element of this that it is, the film is very, uh, I was trying to describe it to somebody, right? And this is how I described it, and you can kind of laugh at me or not, but I said like, if you could imagine David Lynch directing an episode of Twin Peaks in Oma, and you're kind of on the right track. I mean, I, I do feel there were a lot of references to Twin Peaks and that kind of like really dreamlike state. I mean, was that what you were going for? Not, not even close. Uh, no, no. I mean, it's really nice that people are mentioning David Lynch. Obviously, like the, you know, that couldn't it couldn't be more flattering to have any comparisons made to him. But it wasn't it wasn't genuinely what I was going it, going for. It was more, I think, like <clears throat> since I've been pretty young, I've been taking photos and I've been, always been into like noir films and, yeah. and vivid colors. And and I think, yeah, I mean, the whole the world of the film was always going to have that look. And I felt like that sort of just represented what it's like to be a teenager in a real intense, vivid way. So yeah, I mean, it's kind of accidental that it might be like David Lynch, but obviously that wasn't intentional. Like no, no, no. I think like it's a distillation of so many things. I mean, when you make something, you just you just act on your instincts, really. And yeah. I mean, a lot of the inspiration actually came from my own dreams and and photography that I'm interested in and. And then just like, yeah, coming up with the story and, and, and the characters are based on real people I know. And so, yeah, a lot of stuff, really. Yeah. Um, it's there funny that you, you said that there that you kind of you talked about like dream, like your own kind of dreams and photography and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, did your career leading up to this doing music videos and doing advertising? I mean, did that kind of like play a part in it in the sense of like it's smaller stories, you know, that sort of way yeah. that you have to kind of get the story out quicker, like. Yeah, I mean, I think well, I think my background, yeah, of course, it's going to play a part in it. And I've had a long time to practice some visual and sonic uh, storytelling through the music videos and through short films and commercials. So um, that definitely that background informed it. You know, I, I have had the opportunity to do a lot of big technical shoots and so on. But then when you get to the feature, it's just a totally different beast as well. Because yeah. especially actually the budget was pretty small in the film in comparison to budgets I've had in other projects. Yeah, yeah. So you you have those um, restrictions. But like working really, over, working with actors over a sustained period as well was like, that was probably my favourite aspect of the feature that I haven't had a chance to do through the other short forms, you know? Yeah. Yeah. In, the, in that, like, I mean, I, I suppose, like, what, was there any one particular scene that you've, I mean, really kind of honed in on that you're like, I've, I really want to nail this particular scene. I really want to get this right as, as much as I can. I'd say like the beginning and the ending, because I wrote those first and they were very much like, again, you know, they are sort of vivid dream worlds where you sort of, the beginning is very much dream and then the end is like a hybrid between yeah. dream and reality. And then the whole thing sort of come in full circle by the end. Yeah. So yeah uh, that was really important to me that it kind of could mirror the beginning and the end so it felt like you were taken on this journey that sort of went came back on itself again. yeah, they yeah. Inver it inverted itself by yeah. the end literally like so that that part came first really in terms of the the visual side and writing it and then yeah I, I normally start with scenes really and then build it out from there and then the story built from there really yeah can we talk about the soundtrack? Because again, like just, I I know I keep bringing it up, but like it really like the whole time, like even the scene when uh, he's in the jail meeting his brother and that beautiful song comes on. I, to to my mind, that was like that's pure Lynch, like that's literally blue oh, velvet yeah, kind yeah. of thing. Like, um, were there any songs that you wanted to get that couldn't get that you couldn't get? Oh yeah, of course. I mean, I mean, we had a really small budget. I had like a bunch of songs I was always always wanted to use. You know, there was um like a Nancy Sinatra track in there, of course. And then there was uh, a Suicide I always wanted to put in there. Um, who else did I have? I mean, I, no, I got I got those tracks. I mean, we got them with, you know, for very cheap too, which was amazing. But then there was other tracks, like there was an, a guy called Gerald Chack that I wanted to use with the girls jumping on the bed. And then he did give approval, but he gave it too late, you know. After. Oh shit, so you had like so, the cut done, like? Yeah, but then I had I, I ended up using um, Caribou for that one, which yeah. was, of course, like, as good, so I'm happy with the Caribou. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, we were really lucky, got some great people involved, and John Hopkins gave me his, his tracks, and I've worked with him in the past, and um, yeah, that was a great process, and then at the same time had um, 
a guy doing the score too. Yeah, John that's Clark. right, John Clark. Yeah, and it's his first score, and yeah, you know, he so he he added some really interesting elements to it via that. Um, but yeah, so good combination of both. Yeah, this is it. I mean, like, I, w I would wonder, like, having done music videos and then kind of applying that kind of the thinking that you would use in, in terms of editing and stuff like that. I mean, is it a completely different way of thinking about it in terms of, like, you know, music video to a feature or how does it work for editing now? I think, yeah, I mean, I think you, it is. You, you're obviously, your edit is very much about the narrative and, and like, when it comes to a feature, whereas on a music video, you're more, uh, yeah, you're more led by rhythm and, and, and as, as well as narrative, but more possibly by rhythm. So this time it was a bit different, but at the same time, I, I, because it was a youth film, I wanted it to be like visceral and thrilling, but I also wanted it to remind people of their youth and the music that they f like fell in and out of all the time and like to have that fluidity. Like, so it does like, chop and change between scenes and between music styles intentionally so that you get that feeling of being young and yeah. changing your mind about everything all the time enough, which is yeah. basically what uh, that's what I remember about it anyway yeah the um another thing that I thought was really cool was um or, or uh, maybe cool it's not the right word, but it was interesting was um like the intensity of it like as in like the way that like it was just really kind of heightened everything about it was really um full on I mean on set I mean was there anything you were doing as director to kind of get everyone to that point or were they bringing it them themselves like I think it was probably in the script because yeah. it just was there yeah I mean it's a combination of yeah I mean it was always written in, in a quite intense way yeah. so um and then the actors obviously are you know they were identifying with those characters and and going there with those characters and um, yeah, I wanted it to be quite dystopian and a bit mm. weird and experimental, and um, yeah, so they kind of they kind of went there with that as well. And and then I think you feel the tension maybe more in the way that we you know the edit the pace of the edit as well and the sound design too. Mm. I think brings a huge amount of atmosphere to a film. So that was a big part of it really, so that it could feel really immersive and you'd hear the bass when you're in the cinema and it would kind of like rumble right through yeah. you. I mean, I wanted to have that going on a lot, you know? Yeah. In a way, it's sort of taking youth and, and seeing it through the prism of a horror movie a little yeah. bit. Um, so it's a bit random because it's sort of a very visceral, thrilling comer of age. Well, that's what it's intended to be. Yeah. Um, and maybe has more in common with horror than it might do with other genres. Like, yeah, like like teen dramedies or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. It's more. It's not a very romantic view of being a teenager. No, not in the slightest. Which was cool. Like that's what I really oh, loved about I'm it. Like glad. It was you either like, love that or you like it just terrifies you. I mean, I think I've seen people they just like they go, oh yeah, it's totally you know I totally got it, and then other people are like just find it too unsettling. Yeah. You know, it depends whether you like films that make you feel uncomfortable. That's it. Like I mean, I, I, that's what I was gonna say was was that like I was watching it was like I'm very creeped out by this film. I love it, but I'm very creeped out, and I wonder like. I mean, obviously, that was the intent. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. You were setting people in, on in edge. in a quite pulpy way, though. I have to be honest. Like, it, it is like it is dark, but it's also quite fun and irreverent at the same time. I don't think it's you, there is a heaviness there, yeah. but there's also some levity in moments too. And I just, yeah, it, it, it that's the subjective view of youth I wanted to bring out because I felt like I hadn't really seen that so much. Mm. The only way, yeah, you've seen it by a horror, but not in maybe not in common of age so much. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, um, do you see yourself kind of staying with this kind of like experimental bent? I mean, like I mean, like I mean, in terms of like you know, it's your it's your first feature film. Obviously, you've built up this career, you know, doing these really kind of in imaginative uh, shorts and music videos and so on. Do you see yourself kind of going towards more commercial stuff, or is it a case of now that you've kind of you've done the one feature? What are you, like? What are you thinking for an next like? I mean. I don't know. I, I suppose I don't really think about it that way. I think about it more like just really want to do like projects that um, interest me and that yeah. I find inspiring. But you know, I love personally. I love like art house films, but also love a lot of really great commercial films too. So I think it's just like um, pursuing what you really what you're really interested in and, and just trying to yeah continue to like. Um, act on my instinct really. yeah but I mean for instance I really want to make a sci-fi which is you know that in itself you yeah. can go quite commercial but you can also go a bit artistic with it and I think it will probably be a combination of both really yeah, yeah. do you see yourself kind of um, staying in like Ireland with, with with that kind of with that prism or do you think it could be go beyond it like 
I mean, I think it, when it comes to that, I'm, I'm just, it's going to be all about the locations and sure, what fit yeah. it as well. So I, I don't know how, it'll depend how it goes with the location search, where I end up filming it, I think. But of course, I want to keep making films in, Irl in Ireland, like whenever, you know, whenever it suits the story or yeah. the vision, you know, and uh, I mean, uh, Ireland's a madly inspiring place. So especially like visually it is. So I was really, I was keen to show Ireland in that light, you know, the place where I filmed Round Lives, I grew up round and it is, I've always found it really dramatic and wild west yeah. in its vibe. And I'd taken so many photos of it growing up that I just felt like, it felt like it was an amazing canvas for a story. Okay, so when is the movie out? It's out on Friday, the 22nd of June. Grand stuff, and it'll be released in UK and Ireland that date, yeah? Yeah. Cool stuff. Exactly. Great stuff. Okay, Eva McArdle, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.